Not much is likely to change with the rankings tonight. Top six teams, all one. Top ten teams, all one. Sorry if that spoils the drama for you. But it really doesn't if you're willing to look a little bit deeper. Tonight, when the rankings come out, pay attention to who winds up a little farther down the list. There might be teams that have been forgotten that carry some weight with the committee. They played some of the contenders. Find out where they are, and that could make a big difference come selection day. Take Syracuse, for instance. How high will the Orange rise? A date with Notre Dame on Saturday, and they've already pushed Clemson to the absolute limit. Then there are the teams who are lurking, like West Virginia. They keep winning and hoping, just needing that door to crack open ever so slightly. Might not take much. The clouds of drama are indeed building. You just have to know where to look for them. Welcome to College Football Playoff Top 25, presented by Goodyear. That committee room is hard at work. Grapevine, Texas. Now, look, they probably didn't have to do a lot of shuffling at the top because everybody at the top of the college football playoff rankings able to win last week. Top 10 teams did. You had to get all the way down to 11 before you found a loss. But a lot of things can be instructive tonight. Glad to have you with us. Reese Davis, Joey Galloway, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer. So, Jesse, what are you looking forward to? Let's say, I think we know what the top four is going to look like in all likelihood, maybe even the top six. What are you looking for beyond? Uh, I'm looking to see if teams are moving here after the top four. How about Ohio State right now at number 10? They just beat then number 18 Michigan State on the road. I think there is some question as to whether or not Ohio State's a team that's in control of its own destiny right now. Even if they beat Michigan and play Northwestern in the Big Ten title game, maybe Northwestern is ranked in that game. But Oklahoma and West Virginia, as of right now, are ranked ahead of Ohio State. They might have to play each other twice. They might. And if one of those teams wins that game twice, maybe that's enough to keep Oklahoma and West Virginia ranked ahead of Ohio State, even if they win. You missed the show last week. That, that was a con that was a contentious debate about controlling their own destiny. Ohio State definitely doesn't control their own destiny. How about the teams that are in the mix, that are in the hunt down the stretch? Like, if you're talking about the four spot, like Mississippi State being in the bottom of the 25. How about Northwestern? Those are teams that are going to be resume builders for certain squads and how they look. So I think those people at the bottom of the 25 will matter when we start to reveal them. Yeah, I think the top five is set. Uh, I want to see what the committee does with Oklahoma. Not sure they'll move this week, but if you watch this team, defense has been a bit of a struggle. Uh, rankings and the numbers not so good. <laughs> I like how but you put the, that, though. But on the other side, though, the offense is off the charts good. So is there any movement in that 6 to 10 area? You mentioned Ohio State, West Virginia's in there. Washington State yeah. uh, goes on the road and beats Colorado. So is there any movement in that Oklahoma area with a defense that is a bit of a struggle? Yeah, there? Rob Mullen's going to join us in a little while. I'm going to ask him about that, about how the committee's looking at a team that is so uh, so good on one side. And <laughs> a so, juxtaposition. Uh, yeah, yeah, everyone starts juxtaposition. smiling when they say, yeah, the defense is... Uh, you know, they're like 17 spots worse than any other team that's ranked neither the college football playoff rankings or the AP top 25 in terms of defensive efficiency. It, their know, statistics have actually gotten worse on defense and since they since, fired Mike Stoops as defensive coordinator. Yeah, uh, Kirk Herbstreit is with us now. Or? So, Kirk, outside of those teams at the top that we expect to remain the same, what are you curious to see tonight? Oh, mercy. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious. Sell me, Kirk. Sell me. Let's go. <laughs> I am curious to see my friends, what Washington State uh, will do. Uh, Joseph uh, Scott Galloway, he touched on it, and he, he talked about Oklahoma. You guys have all talked about Oklahoma's defense. Um, I don't know if it's going to matter much with Oklahoma having an opportunity to play West Virginia, but I do want to see if, if Washington State, we, we keep waiting for, at least I keep waiting for them to coog it, and they're not. They, they, they are continuing to win. And so I want to see if they're rewarded, if they move up at all, uh, get into that mix with those two Big 12 teams. In a perfect world for Washington State, Oklahoma would, would lose in Morgantown, and those two teams maybe play again, and, and Oklahoma ends up beating uh, West Virginia. That would open up the door possibly for Washington State and Ohio State uh, down the road if Ohio State were to win out. You have some pretty significant games coming up this weekend in the Big 12 for sure. West Virginia going on the road to Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State. Texas and Iowa State still in the midst of it as well and trying to get into that Big 12 championship game. So remember, we don't see the rankings until you do, so let's go ahead and show you the top 25 tonight. We'll count them down. Hey, this week's college football wow. rankings brought to you by Goodyear. 
and Boise State after coming back to beat Fresno State at 25. And Mississippi State really didn't fall that much despite the shutout loss. And how about Alabama. Utah State sitting there now at 23? That's a team that in the AP poll and coaches poll is a top 14 team. Boise State also a top 25 in both of those polls. So maybe a group of five contender for a New Year's Six Bowl game if UCF were to lose now in the toughest stretch of their schedule. And UCF will have an opportunity for its best win on Saturday if they can beat Cincinnati. Yeah, UCF really excited to see Cincinnati jump into the top 24, sit at 9-1. and one. Luke Fickle's done a terrific job making Cincinnati a real football team as UCF is going to look for ways to build a resume. Herbie? Hey guys, North, North, Northwestern up there top, in the top uh, 22 with a chance to win their last couple games to, to get to 8-4 and four before they get to Indianapolis. Significant because they're only going to climb if they continue to win. And if Michigan gets into the crosshairs there, like we keep talking about if a Georgia team ends up knocking off Alabama, that, that possibly could be big for whether it's Michigan or Ohio State if they have an opportunity to play a top 18, top 19 type of uh, Northwestern team. And Northwestern on its way to that Big Ten championship game and now to avoid a stumble in one of their last two games so that they can stay in those rankings and perhaps, uh, look, they're trying to win it, but from the other team's perspective, trying to sure. get a top 25 win. Boston College wow. stays at number 20. I mean, you know what? I think that's as it should be. You lose to a top team of number one or number two is Boston College. Starting and, quarterback yeah, goes sir. out early. No, why, exactly. why, would you, why would you drop? Now, you could drop them because you don't think there's good because the quarterback's yeah. not there anymore if you want to. Utah getting back in. Imp important for the Pac-12. Important for Washington State, another team that we're, we're talking about. Yeah. They're getting in. We don't know who's coming out of Pac-12 South. I mean, everybody's still. No, but this is good South, for Washington but State. Definitely good for Washington State with Washington being in, and then they still got to play in the Pac-12 championship game. If they can win it, teams can rank. Keep your eye on it. Iowa State, guys. A team that's won five in a row. They've been a totally different team with Brock Purdy, a quarterback. Of course, if they win out, they got a big one this weekend against Texas. David Montgomery won't play the first half of that game. But if they win out and West Virginia loses once, this is a team that's going to the Big 12 title game. Now you have the tie break by virtue of the head-to-head -head victory against West Virginia. They would not hold that against Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Conversely, Texas holds it against Oklahoma, but not against West Virginia. That, that's probably the most intriguing battle coming down the stretch in the Big 12. Kentucky's still getting a lot yeah, of credit. Kentucky a losing, lot of respect. Respect. losing, losing to Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, I thought no, they would no, fall really? further also. No, thumped by Tennessee. Maybe that wasn't so. yeah, Two straight losses, you only dropped down to 17. Now, maybe, so. maybe so, but you start looking at everything else and, and uh, try to stack every, them up. Every, everyone else lost. Yeah, Washington's got an opportunity here to win the Pac-12 still. They moved up seven spots this week in the rankings there. The Longhorns sitting at number 15 and 7 and 3 with a great win against Oklahoma on the resume. And UCF still sitting at number 11. That's up one spot from 12. They move up with Kentucky falling behind them. And Syracuse, who has Notre Dame on Saturday, they are sitting there in the 12 spot now. We're seeing a lot less ACC, uh, a lot fewer ACC teams than we did last week in the rankings. So Florida is still sitting at 13 at 7-3. and three. So let's look at the... Top 10 now and Ohio State holding firm at number 10 despite that win on the road in East Lansing. It's not enough to move the Buckeyes up and just ahead of them, West Virginia. That is the just exact same as it was a week ago, just ahead of the Mountaineers at number eight. So can we just... Nobody's moved. Yeah. <laughs> Keep scrolling. Well, Nobody's well, moved. Now it's over. Right. Well, we could shuffle a little we, bit yeah. in the top six. Cut it we'll down, see. Reese, but, but again, I, I think Washington State... LSU's number seven. Is a, that's important, Washington State, because think about LSU. If you're starting to debate Washington State, listen, if chaos comes, Washington State, you could play Utah, who we just saw in the top 17 or top 20, and you could play Washington. You can play them in back-to-back -back weeks. Exactly. Could help that, them, that's right? very, very important for Washington State. And here's the thing with Washington State. They've always been a great offensive team. They've always been able to score. They're playing pretty good defense. Yeah, they are. They, they, Cal, they don't lose a uh, game against Cal when they score under 20 in the past. That usually doesn't happen because they give up so many points. Washington State's a pretty daggum good team. I, really good. I, I want to watch them more because they're a team I think they can jump up in there. They're going to need some help. Oh, they're and, definitely and, and, need help. Any, There's no anything doubt. Anything we're looking at now, uh, these teams are going to need some help. Washington State would help themselves by blowing people out. Going on the road, beating Colorado the way they did is very impressive. So now at this stage, Teams need to win impressively because if we get down to the end, uh, we're going to jump into conversations about, okay, somebody has to unseed somebody mm -hmm. to move up. And so you have to look impressive doing it, but I don't know that Washington State has enough left to get there. You know what? This is the odd thing, I think, Joey, is that all of these teams, they want a lot of chaos at the top, but the one thing that teams like that probably don't want 
they probably want Alabama and Clemson just to go ahead and win. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that way they'll clear concede those two spots and then let them do you help concede, them clear do you out the concede one Michigan one. also, though? I mean, with Ohio State sitting behind, Michigan, if Ohio State beats Michigan, then you open up a door for another conversation oh, sure. of can these teams, yeah. can yeah, Washington no, State talk, hold off on Ohio State? Right. I was talking more along the lines of a Washington State, a West Virginia, yeah. if Oklahoma, they want to try, Oklahoma yes. maybe even a little bit. Maybe they just need those two spots to be filled. They need Alabama knock out a couple of other sure. teams. <laughs> and Clemson, Alabama too, would help. Uh, Herbie, what's your reaction right there? Not much change right there, particularly in the top ten. Yeah, I, I continue to look at LSU, and, I, and, and you know, you could debate whether or not they're, they're deserving of their spot. I just wonder how it potentially plays out. Has LSU hit a ceiling? Like, is there anything that they have left that the committee is going to say, oh, yeah, hey, LSU is going to continue to move up, or will teams eventually have the opportunity to go by them? So LSU, to me, it's almost like they're in the middle of that. If you, get them, if you look at the teams behind them that still are potentially thinking of a conference champion, uh, you just wonder where that ceiling is and if that is the ceiling for LSU or could they possibly move up with I know they have A&M uh, at the end of the year what are they who else do they have left uh, they've got a rice nine conference game they've got this, rice yeah rice will yeah, give them so, a bump. Yeah, yeah. I know. No. You know, no, I just wonder if, if that's pretty much LSU's kind of just holding a spot and eventually teams they potentially, yep. if they win, will yeah. go right by them. That's You would think that's, that's kind of the and way to play I think the committee is also looking to see whether these teams are improving. I think LSU playing against an Arkansas team that hadn't won a conference game yet and winning by seven points, albeit on the road, wasn't overly impressive. I think you could say the same thing about Ohio State. I'm still waiting to see them put a total complete game together. Their defense finally looked really, really good against Michigan State, against a very banged up Michigan State offense that gave the game away. That doesn't that doesn't do anything that gives no, them fits. It no. doesn't do the RPG. It's, and it's Ohio really, State's really a 14 point win yeah, for LSU. They, it, it, took, yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 they start from scoring. I, I was wondering the same that thing. I was thinking, that upset okay, some what, people. I wonder if the committee is sitting there saying, okay, they took a knee before they went in, and we'll count that as 17. We'll give them the seven. Against Arkansas, yeah, it shouldn't against, matter. Against an Arkansas it shouldn't team. matter. But, but I agree they're, they're, right. they're sort of floating there, sort of in the way, but I don't think they'll stay in the way if, say, a West Virginia wins out or Oklahoma wins out. They'll get out there. Washington it's State, a too, it's, a perfect them them it's a perfect example, though, of the committee doing exactly what it says it does. They evaluate it up to right now yep. without any peaking forward. That's an example. But peaking forward, I think we all can sit here and look and say, uh, you know, teams are going to pass LSU if yeah. they yeah. still have one and, loss. And, and Let's look at the top six right quick here. I think onward. This is onward we go. Expect. Onward. Number one. Alabama. Alabama. Hey, Number surprise. two Alabama. is going to beat Clemson. Hey, right behind. You know, the one thing I want to hear from Mullins, is there a big gap between Alabama and Clemson? And then how does that compare to the gap between Clemson and number three. And guess what? He's not going to answer you that question. But I'm asking him. I'm getting, <laughs> if he's watching right now, he's getting fair warning to formulate a really nice answer on it to tell the truth. <laughs> he's laughing right now, I'm told. And just behind Notre Dame is Michigan. Now, Notre Dame, uh, Michigan, one could argue, is playing better football than Notre Dame right now. But Notre Dame's still getting credit for that perfect record and the head-to-head -head victory against the Wolverines. Georgia's number five, and I'm not implying that Notre Dame's not playing well. I'm just saying I think Michigan's playing really well. And Oklahoma is number six. So we have it just exactly as we did last week. Just a few takeaways from this. First time in the history of the college football playoff rankings that the top ten remains exactly the same. Alabama has been number one for more than half of the rankings. UCF at number 11. Now, I know that's not where they want to be. That is the highest ranked group of five team in the college football playoff era. So they are, despite the fact that their schedule right now, strength of schedule is 118, they're getting credit for having 122 in a row. And now the lowest ranked team to make the college football playoff at this point in the season, Michigan State did it from the nine hole in 2015. Of course, they were able to ride a big upset on the road of Ohio State that year to get into the playoffs. So, Kirk, not much changed. Uh, anything that, that you look at right there you would take exception with or something that, that you could forecast a little bit based on that top six? Uh, no, not really. I mean, we're, we're, what we're looking at right there is what all of us kind of speculated and, and thought. You made an interesting point when you said that you could make a case for Michigan uh, currently playing better uh, week in and week out than Notre Dame. I thought Notre Dame is, is the one team of, of all the teams that is not only playing against their opponent, they're, they're playing against themselves and against perfection as far as Lee Corso likes to say uh, because they, 
they haven't had that marquee opponent outside of Michigan. They have big name brands, but unfortunately, mo many of those teams are down this year, including USC, who's hanging on uh, at the end of the year. So I, I think with Notre Dame, um, maybe not this week necessarily because Syracuse has a higher ranking, so the perception is that that would be a better opponent. But uh, I, I think that they need a strong statement at the end just to solidify themselves in case there is any potential nasty, messy stuff on the last weekend. Of course, we're talking about Georgia possibly upsetting Alabama. They want to make sure that, that they're safe and, and in, the, uh, in the clubhouse. So, uh, but I, I'm with you. Michigan is a team that, that's trending as well as anybody. And for us, it's all going to come down to the 24th when they head to Columbus and, and see if they can get through beating Ohio State. You know, we talk a lot about schedules, and scheduling involves a little bit of luck. And Kirk alluded to Notre Dame's luck or lack thereof with their schedule. What kind of world are we living in when the Notre Dame starting quarterback gets hurt? Right before the Florida State game. And the only thing the Irish fans are concerned about, will Oof. he be ready for Syracuse? Hope he gets back. I mean, you know, but Florida <laughs> yeah, Florida State, yeah, I got that one. Yeah. Florida State. And instead they're worried about Syracuse. <laughs> it, it really underscores how Notre Dame looked like a brutal schedule and it's turned out now you're struggling outside of Michigan to find a big time win but an opportunity well I, and I think it's a compliment to Notre Dame because there's a lot Absolutely. of programs in the country that if their starting quarterback goes down they would they could struggle mm -hmm. and you could say what you want to say about Florida State too the one thing they did have though was a very athletic disruptive defensive line that gives a lot of different people fits how about Notre Dame's offensive line in that game guys they've been beat up all year yep. arguably had their best game of the season with the backup quarterback in, didn't give up a sack. They ran for 365 yards. I would say you could come away from that Notre Dame win against Florida State and maybe be even more impressed with them as well, a football can, team. Can we go back to Northwestern was in the top 25. Mm -hmm. they, they took care of Northwestern easily as well. I mean, easily. That, you go look at the box score and you want to start pointing to special teams and some crap that happened late. It, it was a dominating performance. So I, I get that we're going to do the comparison game with – Michigan's playing X like this right now, and Notre Dame's playing like this right now. Notre Dame's playing really good football. And if you start to look at their roster, offensive and defensively, where's your holes? There's not big holes that you can point to that they don't do this well. They do everything really well. They might not do everything great, but they don't have a weakness that you can just poke at and say, they don't do this well, I'm going to explore. I, I think we'll find out this week, though, when you look at Notre Dame's schedule, uh, the Michigan offense sort of sets up for, for Notre Dame and what they do. Uh, the, the, uh, the Stanford offense, same thing. So this week, when they go against Syracuse, they'll find an offense that passes the football and throws it around. And I always say, we don't really know what these teams' weaknesses are until they find a team that can exploit a weakness. And so we don't know. They might not be great on the back end. We'll find out against a Syracuse team with Eric Dungy and Dino Babers, who's going to throw the ball around some. So we'll find out what Notre Dame is on the back end. And in this same conversation, Stanford is another team who's usually a pretty good football team. But now they're a team that is kind of they're down, so they're hurting a Washington State. They're hurting a Notre Dame because they're not where they are. And we look at these schedules, and it's like, man, some of these teams that are always good teams are now doing nothing for the teams that beat them. Here's the reality with, no with Notre Dame, too, though. It, it could happen. I don't think it's going to, but they could have beaten the Big Ten and ACC champion by the end of the year if Northwestern yeah. wins. If Pitt goes to the ACC title game, just saying, mm -hmm. not likely, but their schedule might not look so bad at the end of the year. Yeah. I, I don't think it's if bad. It's just not. In. It's just not what we what thought we it was going yeah. to be. I think it's still a very representative schedule, Kirk. There he is. Oh, I, I would say I want to I want to agree with uh, Jesse and David about about Notre Dame. I, the, the one thing you have to say when you're looking in, in the latter part of the season is what kind of defensive line do you have? And, and Notre Dame has an excellent defensive line. And Joey, to, to, about their secondary, they might be able to get away with not having superior uh, secondary play because they're so good up front and they can get, uh, they can get pressure with four. So, I, I, you know, if you look at that, you look at Ian Book, if, assuming he's healthy and he's able to come back, Dexter Williams, Boykin on the outside, Claypool, the tight ends, the offensive line playing well. If you compare this Notre Dame team to where they were in 12 when they played Alabama, when it was more about just it was almost like they had the luck of the Irish that year when they ended up getting to the championship this feels I think we can all agree very very different especially with Ian Book coming in there to give them more of a balanced attack more of a, a sense of urgency on offense and the executions at a very very high level so you combine Book and Williams and all of that mm -hmm. along with the defensive front
I don't know. It, feel, it feels like this Notre Dame team, despite not having those marquee wins, they are doing a great job at taking care of business. Yeah, don't misunderstand what I was saying. If they win, they're going to the playoff. And if they, if they were to stumble Saturday and then still beat USC, I still think that they merit consideration by virtue of the way they've played all year and the fact that they beat Michigan. You said it doesn't have to be. If they stumble, they still. Losing. I'm saying I, I'm not saying they will or even that they should, but I don't think they should be eliminated. That's not oh, an elimination. Think they'll be eliminated. But, a lot of people but do. I'm not. If, I, but if, I don't if, agree with if that. If Oklahoma that wins way. out, if Michigan wins out, then I do believe that Notre Dame is eliminated if they lose. You still would have in that case a head-to-head -head victory by Notre Dame over Michigan with their that. backup the with their yeah. backup quarterback. And, 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 and I, I, I agree with that, but Maybe, you also got to look at the way they're playing now. And without the mention, I agree. No one's playing much better football yeah, than Michigan right, right now. Right. Yeah. So I think you I also have to look at that. Okay, we're going to talk about what would be the biggest headache for the committee right now. Alabama, please, Clemson, Notre please Michigan. bring it. Which of the top four losing would be the biggest problem or create the most controversy? And Rob Mullins. Uh, he's frowning now. I'm told he was laughing earlier listening to us. We'll, we'll get Rob all straightened out here and find Come out on, what the big gaps Let's are. Go, Coming up when the committee chair joins us a lot. College football playoff. Top 25 is presented by Goodyear, hardworking tires that deliver blimp-worthy performance. We had three undefeated teams make the playoff in the college football playoff era, and we've got three sitting at the top that just keep holding serve. Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, followed by the one-loss teams of Michigan, Georgia, and Oklahoma. Of course, Georgia and Alabama already set to play in the SEC championship game on championship Saturday. Joined now by the chairman of the College Football Playoff Selection Committee, Rob Mullins. Rob, let's start at the top. It's been a foregone conclusion. Alabama Clemson is going to be one, two. How would you describe the gap in the room from the voting, the listing measures, and the ranking measures, the gap between number one and number two right now? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, there's a lot of conversation around both those teams. And when you look at them uh, at this point, they're, they're complete teams. They're very strong on offense and very strong on defense. And as you look at the last couple of weeks, Alabama with two consecutive shutouts, which certainly impressed the committee uh, when you add that to their efficient offense. And then you look at Clemson and how their defense played on the road at Boston College last weekend. You know, the only score was a special team score. So, um, you know, still 1-2 at this point uh, through week 11. Is there a gap between 1 and 2? Is Clemson, is Clemson pushed to overtake one? You know, again, we, we spend a lot of time talking about it. I don't know that we put a definition around the gap, but when you, when you load up the metrics, um, you know, they're both top 10 offense, top 10 defense, uh, but at this point, everybody has Alabama one and Clemson two. Okay, so behind that now, is there a bigger gap and a more significant one between those two teams and the other teams in the top five or six? Well, I, again, I don't know that we put a measurement on the gap. You know, when we go through the voting processes, we, we you know, do them in the three categories uh, by threes. Uh, when you look at Notre Dame, again, we see a team uh, that took care of business this week uh, with a backup quarterback and, and a strong defense. And then Michigan's had, you know, two consecutive weeks of uh, winning 42 to 7 with the number one defense in the country and an offense that continues to improve. And then you look at Georgia the last three weeks with what they've been able to do after losing to LSU. You know, again, we see a strong defense, uh, you know, and an offense that's led by Jake Fromm that continues to make progress. What you haven't seen is a strong defense from Oklahoma. You see a championship level offense, it would appear, but the defense has struggled. It was a couple of years ago that a former committee member said that that was a thing the committee couldn't get past. They didn't feel like Oklahoma had a championship level defense at that time and it kind of kept them out of consideration. How would you describe the way Oklahoma is evaluated as it pertains to the way they're playing defense right now? Yeah, obviously we're very aware that they have one of the most dynamic offenses in the country, a great quarterback, uh, lots of great skill position players, but we're very aware uh, that they're having defensive struggles, that that continues to be a deficiency and something that goes into the evaluation. When you look at, at teams sitting behind LSU, and uh, LSU is the two-loss team that's sitting there ahead of some of the one-loss teams, how much weight do you anticipate 
uh, the evaluation process will take winning rivalry games, winning championship games potentially as teams like Ohio State, teams like West Virginia, Washington State, Oklahoma, all will have the opportunity to do. Well, as you know, we don't project, of course. We only, we're only dealing with the results through week 11. And when you look at those teams, you see, you know, some really good teams, Washington State, West Virginia, somewhat similar, you know, great quarterbacks who are, who are leading offenses and improved defenses. Uh, and they're just finding a way to win games. Um, and then Ohio State, again, is finding a way to win games. When you look at what Ohio State did last week, the combination of special teams and defense and how they kept Michigan State pinned in to find a way to win, um, you know, that's why those teams are eight, nine and 10 right now. How, how is the committee looking at UCF as it, as it pertains to whether they're uh, in the evaluation process with some of the upper echelon teams? How many, let me put it to you this way, Rob. How many listing steps does it take before UCF gets on the board? Well, I mean, they've been 12, and now they're up to 11 this week. Very powerful offense, very aware of what their quarterback can do. But in the room, uh, you know, you, you can't avoid the fact that a strength of schedule is an issue when you start to line them up with some of these other teams. Um, so that is a part of the conversation. All right, Rob, always a pleasure. Rob Mullins, the chairman of the College Football Playoff Selection Committee. And for those, look, I know it's a little bit confusing, but quickly, how, how they do the listing and the ranking step is if we were committee members, we would all write down six teams. Whoever gets the most votes among those would then be put in to be ranked. You list them in any order you want, then they're ranked. Top three stay, next three go into the next pool. So that's what I was getting at about how far down the line you get for UCF. Educate them, Reese. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not, I probably needed a whiteboard to explain yeah, all of that. Yeah. Anything that Rob said stick out to you? No, he didn't say much at all. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, man. What do you want to say? No, no I'm, I'm saying he didn't say much. There is not much to say. The, okay, the top okay. 10 hasn't right. changed. And I'm not saying that you're a terrible interviewer, and I'm not saying he didn't. No, because I'm the best. Yeah, interview. exactly. So I'm just saying there wasn't much to say. <laughs> but interesting, though. You asked about Oklahoma's defense. First thing you addressed was Oklahoma's offense. Mm -hmm. And that's the, same, that's, the same, that's the same thing we have done when we talked about this team is their offense first. Other than that, I don't know that he addressed any one of the gaps. And, and that's the question we're wondering in that oh, top I, five teams. Oh, I he think said, he, where's, where's your gap? He I, said, think that's he, not I think he, if you listen closely, I think he admitted there's a gap between two and the rest. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, there, there's a gap. Well, I'm saying when you asked about gap one, two, we didn't address it. And then you said the gap between the three and the four and the five, that gap. But I think he right. said, not, I think, didn't he other. say that Alabama was number one all the way, all the way yeah, through? Yeah, yes. everybody. For sure. Okay. He's, he, that by say the way, gap. he's given us more information than anybody's ever done this before. Yeah. He's, he does a really good job of telling us what they're thinking. Yeah. And listen, I, I think it, the, the most interesting part about it is the Washington State, Oklahoma, West Virginia. Because I think you could look at Oklahoma's defense consistently and you could start making a case for those other teams behind them. I think you could start to do that. They're not and they left it exactly the same and he and he what he just said was he considers them similar. He considers West Virginia, Washington State, Oklahoma very similar. Mm -hmm. Obviously Oklahoma has a more dynamic offense but I wonder if that shifts at all at some point when you start to look at one of the, a couple of those other defenses are playing yeah. a lot better than Oklahoma. I think the difference is obviously you know all Oklahoma ever has to do though is just score one more point than their opponent to keep winning right yeah, and the saving means. grace for Oklahoma is that statistically this is historically one of the greatest offenses in college football history, guys. Do we say Kyler, this every year? Kylie Murray mm -hmm. is playing better than Baker Mayfield did a year ago from an efficiency standpoint off the charts. They've had 300 passing and rushing yards in the same game, three straight games. And we talk about all the skill players they've got. Their offensive line is dominating people. It's just ridiculous what this offense is able to do right now. So I think that's the saving grace. Now, you can't say Oklahoma is a, as complete a team right now, I think, as you, you could say. West Virginia or Washington State, but because of this offense and just the nature of the scoreboard, until anybody can find a way to stop these guys, this is a team that's just going to keep winning. Do, do we start looking at this now instead of going, instead of looking at the teams now and trying to figure out, because we watch so much, we kind of get inundated with all these stats. At what point do we start going, who's going to give Alabama the best game? I think that at some point is going to enter our thought process. The answer is nobody. It, it may be, well, that, that's maybe, not true. I think there yeah, are better I don't, choices I don't think that will true. give. It may I, be I think it will. I think, I think it will come into play because that's the best team. The best team is the one that's going to show up and give the best fight the most consistently in the playoffs. That, and that, to me, is going to be very interesting because I think there's a couple teams. Like, if Michigan plays Alabama, 
But that's a very bad. But it's I, not I about the best matchups. It's about the best four teams. Right. I, got I would you. disagree with you vehemently that that, I got that you. should not be part of but the it evaluation. But it will be. At some point, I it think it will be, be part, part of, of what thinking. we would talk about. Yeah. But it should not enter in the room. Yeah, I don't think it's about giving oh, the viewers at home the, the best. I, I it's not the viewers. I thought he was saying amongst us. Yeah, amongst us. Yes, it's the team. That's what we have to start talking about because I think it's going to be part of the. It's going to be part of the dialogue. I don't think it's going to be in that room. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. That's not the. That should be the foremost deserving. But just like Ohio State not going last year or in the. Because like, they lost by a thousand. Yes, because they knew they wouldn't show up consistently. Who will show up consistently? That's I, part of being the best team is being the most consistent team. I understood, but I think it was more about what they did or didn't do didn't that do. day against Iowa, right, and Iowa. then the game show against, up. against Oklahoma. Take locker rooms, man. They'll get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got, got to be careful. Be careful. Go out Watch there. Out. Watch walk out. out there. Hey, it's you know, only black. one top ten team plays a ranked opponent. Coaches don't want to look ahead, but there are some issues to address. Just ask Harbaugh. It's cold and flu season. Get your flu shots.